All right, hello everyone, and thank you so much for taking a little bit of time this afternoon for this BSBS webinar. Uh, we're so excited to just sit down, talk a little bit about our BSBS program, uh, some of the things that are really unique about it, and those kinds of things for just a little bit of time this afternoon. Um, if you are joining or um, you're coming in late or anything like that, just know that this will be up afterwards at our YouTube channel, which you can find uh, right there on the home page of our website, scuhs.edu. Um, if you have any questions along the way while we're doing this webinar, you can just post them in there and then we'll try to do our best to get to as many questions as we can. If we're not able to get to your question though during this webinar, we'll get back to you afterwards. So definitely go ahead and send the question in and whether we do it here or later on, we'll definitely answer your questions. Uh, so my name is Luke Phillips. I'm Assistant Vice President for the School of Professional Studies. Um, and we're also joined by Ricky Tran. Ricky Tran actually um, did the BSBS program uh, with us and then now is a first term physician assistant student. Um, so we're really thankful to Ricky for joining us. Uh, he's gonna help us out a lot today. And then Dr. Reza Mir Baluki is uh, the, make, make sure I get it right, so the chair of the undergraduate studies department, uh, which includes the Bachelor of Science and Biological Sciences program and also the accelerated science courses. Um, so without further ado, uh, we'll just get started. Maybe we'll have, um, I did some introductions and this is just a really laid back kind of conversation um, that we'll have. We'll be taking questions from you guys who are in the audience and then just talking through the different things. So maybe I'll have you guys just introduce yourself. Um, I, I did my best, but I'm sure you could do it even better. <laughs> Tell us your experience with the bachelor's program. So we'll start you go first. Yeah. Um, uh, my name's Ricky. Um, I graduated from the BSBS program. Um, my experience with it was, I would probably say it was helpful um, just because I was a full-time, uh, pretty much full-time working student. Um, I was a transfer from Cal State LA. Um, it was really impacted there for my major. And when I found out about this school and I noticed that they had a bachelor's program, on Fridays, Saturdays, it, it was perfect. It fit my schedule. I was able to work full time as well as um, pretty much go to school full time and just finish my undergrad. Um, it took me a while, but this this program did help me push through that. Um, I mean, as I was a part of the first cohort, so pretty much right when the the program started, I was the first cohort slash second and third cohort because I transferred in a little late. Um, but the staff, everyone here, they kind of helped us get through everything. So like if there were any hiccups in the programs or because I transferred in kind of not with the first cohort, um, they did help me push through that and achieve my goal or where I wanted to be. Um, Great, thanks Ricky yeah. and Dr. Mirbaluki. So um, I joined SCU in January 2015 as a part-time faculty. I had uh, AMP2, uh, Ricky in my class at that time. So, um, and then as a part-time, I taught maybe for about 18 months. Then uh, I got the position of the chair of the Department of Undergraduate Studies. I still teach, I, at this time, I uh, usually teach on the terms that I have classes. It'll be the research and the practicum. Um, this program is about six trimesters um, and uh, um, 18 courses uh, over two years. Uh, right now, the schedule is um, Fridays, 5 to 10 p.m. We have labs and the Saturdays from 9 to 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. we have the lectures and each course takes about five weeks to finish. All right, very helpful. Uh, so one thing that some of our listeners uh, may not realize about this program is actually uh, a lot of schools when you go you're taking like three or four classes over the course of like your semester or that quarter you're in. Um, so we're on a trimester system for this this program and you're actually taking one course at a time, and each of those courses, correct me if I'm wrong, they're all five weeks long, is that right? So one five-week course at a time, and they're all accelerated courses. So I wanted to have you guys just talk a little bit about that, um, the difference in um, being able to take one at a time and focus, and anything else around the one at a time and accelerated nature of each course. 
Okay, well, so for me, um, since I started at a community college, it was semester, and then I transferred to Cal State LA, which at the time was quarter, and then I transferred here, which is trimester, which is um, pretty much one class per five weeks. Um, what I noticed was in terms of the materials that you're learning, it's about the same, um, whether it was semester, quarter, or uh, trimester, which was, you know, this. Um, it, it felt the same to me um, in terms of the material we covered and um, um, everything we were being tested on. Um, it's just that this is accelerated. It's just a lot faster. You do have to put in your work and it does make you actually, you know, teach yourself. Like uh, the classroom was good, but you do have to be disciplined. That's, that's what this teaches you. So it teaches you how to be more disciplined and you do have to take it seriously. You can't just go into class like a semester twice a week and, you know, just learn the lecture once and then study the day before. This keeps you on top of your game. You pretty much have to study right after lecture all the way until the next week. And I mean, that's what I appreciate about this program. It, it taught, it gave me better, um, I guess you could say better habits um, in terms of um, my academic career. It, it totally changed the way that I had to like approach everything. Mm -hmm. so. so they're all Friday night and then Saturday, like every class, right? Friday, Saturday. Yeah. Okay. And so then, so you're saying it's kind of after class on Saturday, you right away, you get into your routine of studying in preparation for the next week, but you're also able to work and stuff like that yeah. yes. um, as well yes. during the week. Awesome. Anything you want to say about the accelerated? Yeah, the only the only thing is um, for this model that we have like one course at a time to finish. So basically, there are three courses in one trimester. Uh, is a model taken from most of the medical schools that when uh, students go through their uh, pathophysiology courses, they just go one system at a time. So they have like two weeks go to respiratory system, two weeks go to cardiovascular system, two weeks go to urinary system. So uh, the same concept is here that you know, five weeks is really just an AMP one, anatomy, physiology one, five weeks, anatomy, physiology two, chemistry or physics, they will be all five weeks. So you focus on this, um, you go through material and then you finish and move on. They found that this model, students can retain information for a longer time. They may not learn so many details because it's like really fast, but whatever they learn, they can retain it. So they can use it as like a fundamental blocks for later on when they go to grad school or anywhere else, they can use this as fundamentals or build on it to help them to advance in that program. Yeah, that's great. One of the, that leads into one of the other things we wanted to talk about is, uh, so this program is actually developed in a lot of ways to help students prepare for future studies, whether it's physician assistant or medical school, dentistry, whatever it might be. And you've talked a little bit about how the program was developed and how that would help them. Um, so I want to talk a little more about that concept. So maybe um, Ricky, as a PA student, uh, in your first term, have you felt like pretty prepared? And then maybe after you finish, is there anything else you want to add on how it really prepares students and is meant for that? Yeah, um, definitely. Um, just being in my first term with the PA program, it's I mean, if, if anyone's like done their research on the PA programs, it's, it's fast paced, it moves and it does not matter. If you fail a test, you just have to move on. It does not matter. Um, so my experience from the bachelor's program, it's almost the same way. It's not as fast because it's one class at a time. Um, but it did, I think it prepared me because um, it, it taught me self-discipline you know it taught me how to become a better student um, and to move at a quicker pace compared to what i was accustomed to the semester and quarter system it's a lot faster um yeah i mean yeah great anything else and as the course was developed that was taken into consideration in helping prepare so um when the course was they were developed so the um format that they put or the order of the courses that they uh, put these courses together 
was starting from uh, a little bit of human biology. Um, so students just get to know what is the science of biology. Then after that, students go to anatomy physiology, which there are two sections, AMP1 and AMP2. Um, AMP1 is, is a little bit of the basics about tissues and cells, muscles um, in general, and AMP2 focuses more on the systems like nervous system, cardiovascular system, respiratory system, and so forth. Um, after AMP2, uh, the students go through microbiology course. Um, and then after microbiology, they switch to physics. So the material kind of changes. So they go to physics for two terms uh, or two blocks or two five weeks, basically we call it blocks. Um, after physics, then they start the journey in chemistry. So it would be gen general chemistry one, general chemistry two, organic chemistry one, organic chemistry two, and biochemistry. Um, then after that, they go back like to genetics because we need to know a little bit of chemistry because DNA is involved, a little bit of biology. Then after, chem after the uh, genetics, then they go to some courses that they are very specific to the BSBS program. So iOS students or the students who take courses like individually, they do not have, um, um, they cannot register for this. It's just very specific for them, which is they learn about the integrative health because that's the mission of our university here. Um, they are gonna learn about research. They do practicum, they go and observe um, uh, a clinician in whatever they wanna go later. If they wanna be a PA, they may observe a PA a DO, a pharmacist, a, a nurse practitioner, um, dentist. We have, although we don't have any like faculty as being a dentist, but we um, work with the dentist that they are in the market as, as an associated faculty for us. So they kind of, um, um, they go to their clinic and they um, visit, like as a visitor, they observe when they uh, treat the patients. And then the last course that they will have is the capstone, which they actually create um, a research, which is mostly a review article. We don't have the bench work research right now at the CU. Uh, we are trying to kind of move toward that, to have a little bit of bench work. But um, right now the, the protocol is all about um, uh, writing review article, which creates a hypothesis, which is new and very specific to that student. Um, so they create a novel thing. It's not just put things together without any novelty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you. That was a perfect yeah. summary <laughs> yeah, from the man the himself. Two years. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so why don't we dive a little bit into that and maybe Ricky, you can tell us some of your experience. So we started off going through, there's the human bio and micro and physics, then to the chemistries um, and that kind of thing and then beyond to the genetics and that. Um, so were there any classes that were the science-based ones that really stood out to you that you really liked? Were there any that were particularly difficult for you or? I think anatomy and physiology. I mean, we had, this, this guy was my professor. Yeah. Do you want me to go? <laughs> as, as, as well as um, Dr. Um, I believe Gorbani, if he's, if he's still here right now. Um, mm -hmm. Dr. Gorbani. Um, so they taught us um, for AMP one and two, and I enjoyed it um, just because they were able to apply some clinical aspects as well. Since my background is um, emergency or EMT, um, so I appreciated that, and I'm pretty sure most of our classes appreciated that mm -hmm. just because everyone that was in the class they had some kind of background in healthcare already, um, so they were able to apply it and adapt to the class, which I really appreciated. So they gave us what we needed, and then some, like if you wanted to see how it applies clinically to your background. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, definitely that was my favorite class. Um, I learned how to look at concept and big picture versus um, just memorizing. Like in, right. in uh, my previous schools, I'm not trying to bash on them, but, but I just had bad habits. And this school and his class, it, it taught me how to um, learn conceptual and learn big picture. 
So definitely those two, and Dr. Gurbani is awesome too. Mm -hmm. And so the anatomy, that's in the cadaver lab as well, right? So you're getting to go in. We have a lot of open open lab hours and things. Yes. Anything you would you'd be there, you guys would want to add to about the cadaver lab? Oh, I live there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> as a undergrad, um, I, I don't know if we had tutoring, uh, like if they had open lab. I wasn't sure about yeah. that. We don't have open lab oh, for open undergrad. Yeah. So yeah, okay. that could be just that five to 10 lab. There's no open lab for the yeah. undergrad. Mm -hmm. So that was a little difficult when we got tested on that. Um, but for, at least for my experience as PA program, mm -hmm. I pretty much live there. Yeah, um, and I think it's a pretty unique thing for like a bachelor's program to be able to take courses in a cadaver lab. Uh, I, I don't know if, of any others that have, maybe I'm sure there are some somewhere, but. Um, it seems like it's a unique type experience. Most of the colleges, they cannot um, have these um, cadavers and pricing and all the rules that come around it. And I know that there are some colleges that um, they offer a human anatomy course. It's the course title is human anatomy, but they actually have dissection of calf because dissection is part of the, should be part of the course to be able to transfer that course. Otherwise it's not acceptable. So they have like cat dissection, mm -hmm. but they don't have human. Okay, really helpful. Yeah, thank you for that. And I, I think I've heard that from other students too, that the anatomy has been one that they liked a lot. Um, and so, okay, so that's a lot about the science classes. And then Dr. Mir Baluki talked a little more about some of the others. So while we're talking about classes, what about um, students who, uh, once they complete the research in the capstone, it's kind of, it's meant to be a, a publishable work and then they are going and presenting with posters and things like that. Um, can you talk a little about So that? we have, we have um, a research symposium, undergraduate study research symposium twice a year for our program. So the BSP students, they come and present what they have done. Um, the, the timeline is five weeks at the end, but basically they start what they want to write from research, which gives them about three months to, to work on, on that project. Um, so since he was uh, um, in that class, we uh, change some of the things in the courses and the students, they are actually writing um, papers. As I said, they are like, they are these type of papers, they're called reviews that they're hypothesis driven. So there should be a hypothesis, there should be a question that they're answering those questions through this research. Is not just accumulation of the data in the research. So recently, one of the things that um, one of my students did, I'm really proud of her. She was uh, working on Alzheimer and she wanted to just see the relationship between the Alzheimer and Illumina. And um, she sat with me and said, okay, let's search. Anyone else has done this? And we found like a lot of papers that they talk about the uh, relationship between uh, aluminum and also let's say, okay, so what do you want to say? So do you have anything new on this area? So we kind of met maybe four or five times every time, like one hour, 90 minutes to go through it and then brush it, the idea. And it was interesting at the end, um, her title was that lentil has the potential to prevent Alzheimer. No one has published this. So, um, and then she's right now in, in the process of putting this together. We got an invitation from American Journal of Nutrition. So we are gonna submit this for that journal for the publication. So um, we grew in that, er in that area of the research and I really see a, a big potential um, in, in there. So these students, they are, if you teach them how to do it, they actually do it and it's good for them as well when they want to apply for any grad school. If you have a research background, any publication, any letter of recommendation they get, they feel the stronger because they have that publication as well. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's really, that's really great. That's good but to hear. One point I want to say about physics that he mentioned. Physics class, they are very difficult. And if there are students that are listening to us, I encourage you before you join SCU, take college algebra. Um, you know the algebra part of the physics, it help you to kind of digest the stuff. You're not gonna struggle on the algebra part um, because the physics that we have here is algebra based. So you need to know that. Uh, that also helps you in chemistry. Some students I see right now they're struggling in chemistry is not because they don't know chemistry, 
It's more because they have problem with the algebra, they cannot solve the problem. So make sure that you have and, and you're strong in it. So in five weeks of physics, you are not struggling actually with two different, uh, two completely different items. You need to work on your algebra at the same time to understand the concept of physics, which could be really difficult to do both. Yeah, great, very good advice. And actually, before we finish, when we get through a few questions and things, we'll come back around too and see if there's any kind of closing advice too. Maybe Ricky, if there's anything else you think of. So be thinking if there's certain advice you have for like future students who want them to be prepared and know um, whatever it is you might want to share. So we've talked, this has been really great so far. So we've covered like the format of the programs. We've talked about accelerated format, Friday and Saturday nights, one class at a time. We've talked about the curriculum from the sciences to the uh, experience you have with research and everything else. One last question on curriculum before we move on um, is I wanted to kind of think through the classroom. So obviously you have um, any science student would know you have your classroom portion and, and your lab portion that comes with it and uh, talk about that experience and some of the differences and what, what it's like in the classroom uh, with the faculty versus the, the labs. What kind of labs uh, do they experience and anything that's uh, unique about the labs that we have and that kind of thing? Um, I mean, I would probably bring it back to anatomy and physio again, mm -hmm. just because, you know, cadaver. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't, I mean, I, I personally haven't seen it anywhere else. Um, so being exposed to that made me comfortable and ready for um, graduate school. Um, so, I mean, that was different. Um, and having lab right before lecture, um, that was kind of different too. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wasn't sure if that made sense, but I eventually it, it did just because it was, um, you know, we were going hands-on, we were experimenting, but we didn't know exactly why. And then once you go into lecture, it was kind of like, oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. So it was a little different. Um, uh, in that aspect, um, I mean, I, I don't know if I really... Yeah, that's great. Is, it, is that how it typically is that you do the lab first, or is it some are lab first, it's, some are after? It's usually lecture and then yeah. lab, but yeah, this school, it was lab first, then lecture, mm -hmm. um, which, yeah, it, it was, I guess it kind of shocked me in the beginning, but eventually it was like, oh, I get it. Okay. I see, um, you know, we're going hands-on, we're learning the concept and then now we learn the details in lecture. Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah. how I saw it. Yeah. Thing you add there. I actually have done survey through the students if they like to have lab first, lecture second, or lecture first, lab second, and the numbers are like 50-50. There are some students they believe that if they actually do something hands-on, um, or especially for anatomy, if the identification of the parts come first, they know what where those things are. Then later on in the lecture, when they talk about it, then they understand more because now they can uh, visualize it that, oh, pancreas is in this part of the body or stomach is in here or esophagus is in here. So, um, but some people say, no, I want to learn first. I want to read the book. I want to learn what they are and then go actually find the, the, that part of the body. So there are both. Um, I've done a couple of surveys of how even students would like to get a lecture. Some people, they want the instructors lecture the whole day, like 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. all lecture. Some people, they want that, uh, uh, let's say for every hour, 30 minutes lecture, um, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, team-based learning, and the last 10 minutes like questions. Some people wants to have team-based learning at the beginning, then after that lecture. So they kind of, have a little bit of understanding, a minimum understanding of the material and they go through it. So there are so many different learning preferences from students that I think um, we have some instructors that do really good in kind of juggling between the students. One of them, like as you mentioned, Dr. Gobani, um, kind of cover everyone and try to bring some uh, examples um, back and forth and see if there are people that they may not understand just the pure concept. Maybe in the clinical cases, they understand what is important. Um, it is difficult, like right? So two years, all the weekends, sacrifice. But I think 
he can say that it's worth it going from EMT to a PA. Yeah, that's a totally a big, yeah, yeah. totally a big, big, big change in someone's life. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Well, and a lot of our a lot of our programs and, and some of the things you said lead me to this question about being able to uh, have kind of a more intimate setting. You know the students, you can survey them, ask their feedback, and take that into consideration. Um, and then also that movement from a bachelor's to prepared for a graduate program. Um, and so being in a, a school that really prepares for that. Um, so this, we, we typically at SCU, those who are watching don't know, we, we've historically been a lot of graduate programs, but the BSBS is our only uh, bachelor's program. So our, our sole focus when it comes to undergraduate studies uh, is, is on this one bachelor's program. Um, so I think that's something really unique. We put a lot of effort into listening to students and understanding. Um, and also it tends to be small, uh, it's a cohort model with a small class uh, all kind of getting to know each other. So as we kind of transition uh, from like the, the classroom experience, I want to think about the, the student experience and how this is, you know, it's the only bachelors we have. And what's it, what was it like, um, Ricky, as, as uh, being in like that cohort model and getting to know other students and the other experience as a student? Um, the cohort model, I, I did enjoy it just because you do build a camaraderie. So you, you all go through the, the highs, the lows. Um, so like I said, it's camaraderie. You get to build that relationship. And I still talk to a good amount of them today um, from cohort one, two, and three. So I, I still, I still keep in touch with them. Um, and yeah, that, that's what I would probably say. The camaraderie, you, you all go through the same things together. Um, everyone's struggling in a different way. And if someone's struggling in one aspect, you have someone else there that might be strong in that aspect. And we're just constantly just, you know, helping each other, bouncing ideas off of each other. Um, you know, it's, it's, like our second family, I guess you yeah. could kind of yeah, say. Yeah, I mean, okay. you, you tend to fight and stuff too. So it's good for the instructors as well because when they're cohort, then after a while, like they they are bored, they want to do something, so they buy breakfast every Saturday. So oh. instructors they just get free breakfast. Nice. So in their cohorts, every Saturday we have class. Someone <laughs> like bought like coffee or things. So nice. Class, okay, nice. you heard it. So Dr. Rez is <laughs> buying coffee and no, no the students wait, buy I, coffee I for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you have to buy coffee for and breakfast for your instructors. Yeah. Okay. I'm just trying to make sure I get all the notes yeah. right here. It's a, okay. All right, so that's helpful. So the cohort model, only BSBS, the small classes. Uh, anything else you'd say about the student experience um, or anything you'd add uh, in terms of the campus or things you like to do uh, while, you're, while you're on campus here at SU? Yeah, I mean, um, as you brought up, Luke, um, about uh, the student teacher ratio, pretty much like how they, how faculty does listen to the student. Um, at least from my experience, if we bring something up or we have some kind of concern, it's easy, it's fairly easy to actually get to the instructor, have a one on one, and then they'll explain why this, why that, if you had any questions or concerns, um, you know, versus a bigger university um, that I came from. Um, you know, we had to schedule for office hours. Over here, it was more like we could directly interact with the professor and we could get our answers here and now. Um, and this is my experience. Maybe my, my um, colleagues or my classmates might have had different ones. Um, so I enjoyed that and I do like the small campus. Um, I like how we could get wherever we want um, within five, 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, walking slowly too. Yeah. Um, and I do utilize now, I utilize the gym. So I use the basketball court, the weights. Um, so I'm usually there after campus um, as a PA mm -hmm. student. Um, so I'm usually there or we'll hang out in the fishbowl mm -hmm. where the shop, uh, the little store, student store is. Um, so yeah, those are my two areas. Uh, mm -hmm. So I just like the little uh, tight knit, close community. Yeah, you, that's you, just me though. Yeah, that's great. You actually mentioned something earlier too about the, um, you learn to study in a group, which is, and you, you get to know each other, you're studying yeah. together, you're going through the ups and downs together. Yeah. And we hear that when we've done other webinars like this with other students from our graduate programs, that seems to be a theme that 
once you go to whatever medical school or whatever um, you want to do after your undergrad, it's very much like in a group setting. You're, and so actually our campus is it's an interesting thing when you go around like the Learning Resource Center and other spaces like mm -hmm. the Standard Process Pavilion, we call the Fishbowl, mm -hmm. um, or the Chesney Student Center here. There are a lot of like group study spaces that seem to be really helpful for the students. Right. Uh, and, and by practicing group study and, and going in the highs and lows together, I'm sure you're experiencing that in the PA program now. Um, would you say it's pretty, it's a similar thing, right? Yeah, to be honest, I mean, if you're striving for, to go into that graduate level, um, I mean, at least off the top of my head, I think most programs are cohort. I mean, if not all. Mm -hmm. um, so you're pretty much getting accustomed to it and the fast pace um, it's going to be even faster um, graduate level, um, depending on what you're doing, of course. Um, so it is like kind of like a, you're getting your feet wet, you, you know, just trying to test the water, see, see if you can keep up with this. Um, at least it got me ready, I think, um, just because it, it's like the PA program in general, I think is like times three of what we go through here. But it's like, I'm, I'm familiar with and like nothing is catching me off guard. It's cohort, um, accelerated, pretty much learning, um, self-learning as well. Um, so I, yeah, all the disciplines, everything that I, I got from undergrad, I pretty much carried it over. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, very good. We're, we're kind of coming close to finishing up all the things I have. Um, we've covered quite a bit, so this has been really good. Is there any um, anything about the program that, that either of you guys would, would add to what we've talked about so far and before we start to finish up? I know some students that they are not just only to the gym playing basketball. They plan to challenge the instructor asking <laughs> to come to play basketball. Oh, yeah. So yeah, they fine. took me once like, yeah, come play with us. <laughs> they kind of, uh, I had like heart attack that day. Yeah, I, re I remember that. Uh, we we played yeah, basketball. <laughs> we, we got him to play our physics teacher um, at the time. I don't think he's here anymore, but physics teacher played basketball too. Um, ping pong, we challenged Dr. Gorbani. He's actually pretty good. Oh, um, man. So yeah, so like we do stuff like that, especially like during our break time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, really cool. So it's yeah. nice. Awesome. Um, so last thing then is um, if, if any advice, so we're talking to a lot of students, so this is a bachelor's completion program, so students come in with, with a lot of their courses that they've already taken at their current school or their school in the past, um, so they're coming in with 56 units and that kind of thing, so a lot of, you know, undergraduate students, but we also have students who may, um, may come back later in life for finishing up, so um, the more adult learner. And so thinking about the different audiences and advice you give, if, if you're considering a program, uh, is there anything that you would tell our, our viewers before we finish up? Um, for me, um, just do it, I yeah, guess. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, it was just, um, it, for me, it was uh, when I saw the classes, it, uh, it made sense for where I was trying to go. Um, it knocked out the prereqs as well as getting my bachelor's at the same time. Um, and also it's, you know, as mentioned, so like throughout this whole interview, Friday, Saturdays, of course you have to sacrifice for that. But I mean, it was worth it because I was able to work. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I saw, I, I thought it was worth it. It was just, just, just do it. I mean, especially if you're working or if you have a family, um, this is perfect for you in terms of trying to get an undergrad and try to take the stepping stones up to where you really want to be. Um, um, yeah, I mean, it made sense to me um, working full time. I couldn't do that at other universities. Um, at least this is a lot easier. I could work, make my work schedule around it. Um, so that was the biggest thing for me. Um, in terms of everything else to getting where I want it to be. Yeah, that's great, very good. I have a different opinion. <laughs> um, why do you want to do it? Don't do it. Like, what's like, you are, you're, yeah, you're fine now. Why do you want to have education? You know, if you want to start a bachelor, you know, you finish the bachelor, that's not the end of it. Then you want to do a master. Then you may go to a PhD or a doctorate. Your life will be all like, you know, lots of work nights that you need to work, just relax, you know, 
Uh, it's not the end of the world if you don't have the passion. But if you enjoy, then you do it. So the only reason that you need to do it is enjoying education and enjoying learning. But if you feel that, you know, I really don't want to do it, but I have to because now I'm getting paid this much. If I get this, I could be this much. These are not really good excuses to get to a, to a program and uh, let, get a degree. You get a degree because you enjoy to know more, but with knowing more, it brings more responsibility, right? Now, instead of like um, Ricky, like tonight, he could go to the beach do surfing or go play basketball, but he cannot because he needs to study for tomorrow. So you will make yourself limited. He enjoys it, so he does it. But if you don't feel that you can enjoy this learning, don't do it because it will be difficult. And then you spend time and money, go in the middle, and then you decide, oh, I can't do it. Then you wasted that time and money. Mm. That, was, that was really good. Very well said. And so before we finish, I want to say thank you to you, Ricky, and Dr. Mir Baluki. Speaking of um, how busy it is, and, and uh, for you both, I uh, just want to thank you. This has been really helpful. I hope this has been really helpful for all of those who are viewing. Uh, the really goal, we do a lot of webinars and a lot of events and things like that, and the goal of them is to really help those who are considering going to school think about what's, is it the right fit for you? Is it the right um, type of program for you? And if so, uh, what's, the, what's the right place for you to, to end up? Uh, we would love to help you uh, talk through those questions. Uh, even if SCU doesn't end up being the right program for you, we're still here to help whoever might be listening. Um, so in the admissions office, feel free to email or call or set up a tour with us anytime. Uh, you can email us at admissions at scuhs.edu. Now we, we have advisors who would love to talk to you or give you a tour uh, and, and anything else. We also have a lot of events like Campus Preview Day and Open House all throughout the year. Almost every month, there's another on-campus event where you can come and you can meet Dr. Mir Baluki and the um, Associate Dean of the program and, and others as well. So we encourage you to come to those. You can find those at scuhs.edu slash events. Um, and also, uh, if you are interested in the Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences program, it's really easy to get there. Just go to scuhs.edu slash bsbs and it will tell you everything you need to know about the requirements to get in, uh, the tuition, the format and length, and some of the highlights that we've talked about already today. Uh, so with that, we want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, we hope this has been helpful. We look forward to helping you on that uh, educational journey uh, in the time to come. Thanks again.